Hey guys, it's me again, Kristen, from yesterday. Um, I had a plan today to film some beauty videos for my beauty channel, but um, when my leopard gecko DIY rock terrarium video went up today, um, I was reading through the comments as I always do, and um, very many of you were, well I shouldn't say very many of you, I would say around eight people or so, or 10 people were commenting about me keeping two female leopard geckos together, thinking that this can't be done. Um, so I just wanted to make a video kind of talking about that because it sounds like there's a lot of confusion and now I'm confused. Um, so when I rescued um, Nefertiti, she was the only leopard gecko that I had. And then I also rescued um, June and Cash. They were actually in a cage together, um, about a five gallon enclosure together, which you're not supposed to keep a male and a female together because the male can pester the female um, and like trying to breed with her and whatnot. And that can cause a lot of stress for the female. So, um, Today I just did a bunch of researching all over again on it. Uh, and you know, when I got June and Cash, I wanted to get them out of that situation as quickly as possible and I didn't have any extra tanks on hand. So I kept um, June quarantined in um, like, a, like a smaller kind of container thing, plastic container and whatnot. And then I ended up putting her in with Nefertiti so that she could have a larger space because it was a giant like, 40 breeder that I had Nefertiti in. So um, I did a lot of research today. Um, I even read through my leopard gecko book um, and I went through to some different sites because um, they get along super well. They actually like, like I wanna say cuddle together, but they hang out together um, all the time and there's no signs of aggression. I monitored that really, really closely. Um, I let them meet outside the cage and watch them super, super closely and they've been great. Um, so I just wanted to revisit, like visit this in a video talking about it because I'm interested to see what sources you guys are finding um, because I'm not a perfect human. I make mistakes like literally all the time. Um, but all you can do is the best that you can do. Uh, and if you know you're doing that, then you know that's great. But the, the cool thing about the internet is that we can all help each other provide like the best um, homes possible for our animals. So in my research today, I actually didn't find a single site that said that you can't house two females together. Um, I spent about an hour and a half like looking through different sites and mostly what I found was, I was kind of under the impression that you could rarely put females together if they had enough space um, because they are solitary creatures in the wild. But hey Penny, Penny got fixed the other day and she's like bored in her enclosure. Um, but you have to have a cage that is large enough so that they can kind of completely be separate from each other should they choose and out in the wild they wouldn't they would they would come you know cross paths with one another i'm sure but they don't necessarily live in cramped quarters together so um what i know is that uh and what was a common reading throughout my research a long time ago in this book, um, and this is actually written by a uh, two people who have a BS in zoology, um, and uh, basically that two males can never be together because they get um, territorial and they can fight. Uh, I read that you can have two males, or one male with two females in a large enough cage. This book is saying that you should never have more than two leopard gecko. If you have two leopard geckos, you should have a 30 gallon. So moral of the story, I guess, is from what I've read, and you guys are open to comment in the comments below. And if you can put URLs from reputable websites that you guys are finding in your information, that'd be awesome, I'd love to read it. But um, basically, I haven't, really read anything or come across anything today that says that you can't have two females together. Um, I have read that two females, you definitely, you know, it can work out and there are things and reasons why it may not work out. Some of those reasons include a cage that is too small so that they can't, they, you know, they're just on top of each other. They can't have their alone time. There's not enough hides for them to be separate if they choose. Um, and also if one leopard gecko is eating more of the food than the other, that's something you have to monitor um, and just general aggression. But typically it sounds like people aren't really having those issues at all. So um, I'm interested to know what you guys have found. So please leave your URLs in the comments below. If you, you know, I'm a big 
fan of if you are gonna say something you should be able to back it up so i'm also going to put some links in the description box in case you are curious and want to read um what i've read uh from some some different websites these are pretty reputable websites about leopard geckos that i found even this book talks about um keeping leopard geckos together uh females or a male and two females as long as the cage is big enough so with that being said, what I did today um, is I went ahead and, cause I'm gonna do a little experiment here. We are gonna see if my leopard geckos flourish um, by having their completely, like completely own separate areas. So behind me right here, I put together a enclosure for um, June and I have actually put her in there right now. So I'm gonna show you guys the setup of this enclosure and we will see if she is much happier and we'll see if Nefertiti is happier. Um, I, feel, I like, I know that they're solitary creatures but I feel like they're gonna miss each other because they hang out all the time in the other enclosure. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to, you know, I respect what you guys say in your opinions and um, you know, it sounds like this is kind of one of those things like the the argument about do leopard geckos need UVB? It sounds like no one really knows for sure but I guess if you are trying to create the most natural environment ever, a big cage with two would be okay or completely solitary. It sounds like either one could go because in the wild, they're gonna cross paths, you know? Um, the difference is they're able to go their separate ways. And so that's why you have to have a big enough enclosure. So I really don't know where um, my thoughts are on this right now. But for now, we've got Nef um, Nefertiti over in her enclosure by herself that you saw in yesterday's video. And then we have June back here and I'm gonna show, I just went to the, um, the pet store and spent like about $300. Um, I also am actually adopting one of my other leopard geckos out, my male. Um, so I got a bunch of fun stuff for him too. But okay, enough talking. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I put together the enclosure and we'll see what she thinks. Here's everything that I just picked up at the store. Um, and what else? I got a, a tank for a leopard gecko that I'm adopting out so I can get um, him all ready. But I went ahead and got some different things for this. Um, this was actually going to be for my ball python, but it's really quite large and I'd like him to settle in and typically ball pythons, you know, spend most of their life in small hollows underground anyways. So, and they explore when they come out at night. So I'm gonna go ahead and put um, my female leopard gecko in here, one of them, and get this, this thing is really big. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like two feet this way and then like four feet this way. It's really, really big. It's really high too. Um, but we'll set this up right now. Gonna go ahead and use one of these mats that I got from Amazon. These are about $12 or so. And then I'm gonna be using this thermostat with it to regulate the temperature. You guys might recognize this as my old filming studio. <laughs> All right, so I've set up my timer back here. I'm actually gonna take my heat mat and plug it into this guy up here, this is, like I showed you before, regulates the temperature and you have to plug the heat mat directly into this right here. So the probe is down here now. And let's see, I'm gonna put this underneath the mat so we can stick to the glass. And you wanna check that periodically because sometimes they come loose. Now for these, there is a timed outlet slot right here, which is controlled by this dial. And then this one is a switched outlet, meaning if this is, focus, if this is switched over to timer on, then the switch side is just always on when it's plugged in. Um, and then if you have outlet on, um, it just turns this entire thing into outlets. So you want to make sure that your thermostat is plugged into switched outlets so that it is always on because you don't want it to turn the thermostat to turn off at night and for this to get area to get too cold or too warm. I just cut up some repta carpet here and my math skills are very bad. <laughs> How do I measure this? I'm just gonna see if I can cut this. Okay. 
much better. Now I'm just gonna start adding some things and then I'm gonna move everything around. I'm gonna put this back here so this stays down. I put the UVB light up there. This is the biggest one that they had, but um, I feel like I'm gonna need like a way bigger one or like seven of these. So we'll start with this one for now. These things that I just put in here are things that I already had and I'll show you some of the stuff that I bought today. Oh my gosh, I just realized that um, these have been sitting, thawing out for like 30 minutes. These are frozen rats for my snake, whoops. So I did just buy this at Triple L Reptile today. Is this in focus? Yeah. Okay, so this thing was quite expensive. This was almost $40, uh, 37 and 99 to be exact. My girls aren't that big, so I might actually end up giving this to one of my males. Um, but I thought this was really cool. So I'm gonna put this over here on the warmer side. Actually, I'm gonna take this rock out and put this here. And then she'll have an option to be under here in the warmth or, um, you know, over out here on the warm side. This is another cork round that I bought. This was $10. They kind of like to crawl through these, so I'm just gonna set this one up. These are some other things that I already had. So I'm just gonna start placing these around, see how we feel. And I'm gonna take this and put it in the back corner. I know that my girls like to climb actually, so I think that they'll enjoy this. They don't like to climb high, but they do like to climb up on things. I don't know where this has been, and I'm gonna lick this. I wonder how many people have done that. This is like so big. <laughs> It's such an awesome tank. This is a moist hide that I'm gonna put in there. I have a little bit of leaf litter that might be kind of fun in here. Okay, so I know this is kind of weird, but today um, when I put my video up, someone asked me why I don't have my leopard geckos on um, substrate like this, like Ego Earth or something, because she said hers absolutely love to dig. And I said, because mine gets stressed out when I pull them out of their enclosure to feed them. I like to pull my animals out of their enclosure so I can see what they're eating and how it goes for the most part. Um, there are some exceptions like my leopard geckos, they refuse to eat that way. So I have to put their food in their enclosure, which is why I do not feed them or put them on substrate like this. I do not want them to ingest it. Um, so because she said hers love to dig so much and I never get the opportunity to unless they're coming out for playtime and I have like a, sand, a, bin, a bin of sand or whatever for them. I'm gonna put this in there and make it so that she can crawl into this. And I wanna see if I ever see her digging in this. Um, Cause if I do, I, am going to put one in my other leopard gecko's enclosures. Um, maybe she will like it, maybe they will like it, we'll see. I'm gonna put this right here so that she can crawl up here and get into this if she wants to. And I'm just interested to see if she'll use it. Now everything is kind of how I want it. I mean, this isn't the prettiest enclosure at the moment, but she's not gonna care, there's lots to do. Um, but for now, this is what I can put together. So I'm gonna go ahead and get power to the heat mat so that I can get getting uh, warmed up. And then I'm gonna find another light to put on top for the ambient temperature. It should be fine right now in California. Um, it's been actually pretty warm, but I'm going to go ahead and put my temperature gauge and humidity gauge up here on the side and then get a light ready to go in case I should need it. Okay, so I have June here and we're gonna put her in the new enclosure and watch her explore.
Let's see what you think of your dirt. What do you think of that?